Yo guys, welcome back to a new f uh this is episode two of the transfer show. Um the last two days um I forgot to do it, so here we are back with it. We'll be more consistent now uh, with this uh transfer show uh content on YouTube. Um, so, first of all, um, I just want to say, make sure to give us a follow on Twitter, uh, at Aficia Football, and also on Instagram, which is uh, Transfer underscore daily no one. Oh, uh, well, we post a lot of content over there as well. So here we are. The this is Brown and Patty's, and let's get in to the show. So, first of all. Uh, we are going to be talking about Manchester United and their uh, centre back target, um, and it is young defender um, Al Axel Disassi from AS Monaco. Of French, we know he's young, and it started off as um they'd sign Axel de Sassi if uh Kim and Jay wasn't po wasn't a possible deal, but now we are being what's being said. Well, not what's been said, what I believe is Manchester United want them both. We're going to speak about Kim and Jay later in the video. So, yeah. And uh, talks have been ongoing between Monaco, centre back, and Man United. We know Monaco lost Badi Ashile in. Uh, the summer, so he wanted to keep Axel de Sassi until the summer, which he looks like they'll do. But now Man United are knocking. Which does this mean Urian Timber isn't a target anymore? Because for me, it seems like he was at the game at Wembley, but it does seem like Urian Timber has just gone off the target. For Manchester United. Um, but yeah, this deal, uh, 43 million, is a uh, number being thrown around at the moment. And one thing I will say is that this deal is close to happening. Because on the player side, for him, it's, it's obvious that he'd like to join Man United and wages shouldn't be a problem. It's just a price tag and the owners what is going on at Man United because that's the thing stopping the Mount deal at the moment. It's the uncertainty about new ownership of the club. So Manchester United really do need to hurry up with that. Or that's not going to be, it's going to be a problem this window. So, Man United are close to signing Alex de Sassi from Monaco. For around 43 uh, million um, in the summer. So, now, moving on. And it is Florian Belugon. So, into 
Milan and AC Milan uh, are the two clubs interested in Florian Belugo. About oh, a few days ago, uh, there was reports of RB Leipzig also in the race. Napoli into AC. Quite a lot of teams interested in the player, but um, now it's looking more like a two horse race. We know Inter Milan, let's look at their strikers. So they've got Edin Dzeko, Latoura Martinez, Romalu Lukaku, Correa. There's four there, but Lukaku we know, leaving on loan. Um, well, his loan expires, sorry, Checo. I mean, I presume he'll stay. Letaro Martinez. He, he will most likely stay, but who knows in the transfer market. So then, Correa as well, probably stay. But he might be on loan. So who knows. Um, but yeah. This season. Uh, Belugon starts. In. Oh, in. Um, League 1. Or as follows. 37 matches. 21 goals. 2 assists. So. You can tell why clubs are interested in him. And. Uh, for Inter and AC, this is a deal that they want to happen, and he's going to go to one of the other at the moment. AC Milan or are the front runners in this race, and the fee. So the fee is around twenty or thirty-five million. I would have thought to get Belugon, maybe twenty-five to thirty-five. For him, but um, at the moment, I would say that uh, AC Milan are the slight favourites to get him. So now moving on, and it is Kim and Jay who I said earlier on. In the video that we're going to be speaking about. So. Currently we know it's a race between Newcastle and Man United for Kim and Jay. But don't be surprised if Man City. Enter that race. Because we know Pep Guardiola. Uh, I'm out of thought. Uh, could be. Very much on his way out of Man City this summer, with quite a few teams interested. Um, but at the moment, Kim and James South is edging towards Man United. Uh, and he's edging closer to joining Man United in general as well, with transfer talks happening. And a five year contract is what it's expected to be if he does join the Red Devils. So, um, this deal, Man United, Kim and Jay, to be fair, since January has been a big target for Man United. Um, but, like I said, Axel de Sassi is meant to be if. If they can't get Kim and Jay. And it still might be. But at the moment. From what I can see. I would say they're looking for both players. Man United. Because. De Sassi is close. Kim and Jay's close. Ish. I'd say with Kim and Jay. I would say it's very very close. But close ish. Um, because Man United have wanted this player. Since. January, and it's as simple as that. Um, 
there's apparently a 42 million release clause in the deal. Uh, we saw it with Alexis with Carlisle, you don't really know these release clauses until the deal actually happens. Um, and uh, that becomes that became active on July the 1st, so if a team wants him, 42 million, and it's not a lot for a player of his class, really. Uh, but, um, yeah, but very well, I was talking about Newcastle, and Newcastle could hijack uh, the deal, because Newcastle are another team who have really been speaking to the player from from around March, um, and he is Kim and Jay once again. Newcastle's really number one centre back target, and they have whole talks with the player. Personally, I'd say the player prefers to go to Man United, but if Newcastle act first on that release clause, because like what I keep saying. Man United, because of the owner's situation, can't actually get any deals announced or confirmed because of the uncertainty around it. So, um, yeah, Kim and Jay is edging closer to joining Man United. Expected to be a five-year deal, but Newcastle could hijack a deal uh, at any time. Uh, and Kim and Jay, £42 million release calls that became active on July the 1st, um, the opening day of the transfer window in Italy. So, now, next up is Aston Villa. So, Aston Villa managed to get Europa Conference uh, this season. After a brilliant recovery of a season from Unai Emery, because of Steven Gerrard, we thought he it could be in a relegation fight, but that isn't true, and they managed to get seventh place. So, um. Aston Villa, we know they're interesting in the ball that deal for me is just unrealistic. I wouldn't believe that uh Laporte is closer than anyone to a PSG move. Uh joining Milan Scrinio there. Scrinio sign of the free agents. Laporte, you will have to pay. Um but Aston Villa's main centre back target, which I've always thought along the way, that if you look in the past, and I've done uh, players who like who your club will sign, even from January, I was saying that Aston Villa's number one target at the moment is Paul Torres from Villarreal. He worked with Unai Emery. Um, last summer, well, well, no, not last summer, uh, seasons at Villarreal. And was his standout centre back alongside uh, Raul Albiol. So, um, last summer, we know Paul Torres had a store around, tour around Old Trafford. And that deal at the time was set to be around 40 million, I think it was, uh, for him then. Uh, so now, I, I think his price tag would have gone down a bit, but still you're looking between 30 to 40 million. Uh, because the player knows Paul Torres and that, and Paul Torres loves the manager Unai Emery, so. This deal should happen uh, realistically. And Aston Villa have put in a formal offer for Pau Torres, but um, I'm saying it right here Aston Villa 
will for me sign Pau Torres easily. Not easily, but because of the relationships there between manager and player, and now Europe's there. And we know Luna Yamari is a king of Europa Conference and Europa League football. Um, so yeah, I'd, I think that Aston Villa will sign uh, Pau Torres in the summer. The fee I'm not too sure about, but I think this deal will happen. And Laporte... Uh, is fake news and then we on your screen you can now see you're probably thinking why is Suarez on the screen why well, you're not probably it's not rocket science uh, we know Lino and Messi uh, is joined into Miami. Um, so, just a bit of news on that. So, I posted it on my Instagram. So, Fabrizio Romano posted a Here We Go uh, at 4.54 p.m. yesterday. And then you've got me, who did it at 4.50. You know, so who's a better journalist really there? Uh, so I was one of the first people to announce this. We were alongside uh, 4.33 with that one and another journalist. But I was in one of the first three to announce a deal. Uh, and we were before Fabrizio. Um, so anyway, messy deal. We all should know the player. I uh, wanted to join. Um, wanted to join Barcelona to make that return happen, but uh, for whatever reason, I never thought he would return to Barcelona. Me personally. Because of just a financial situation they are in at the moment. So, um, let's talk about anyway. You all know about the Messi deal to enter Miami. Um, so. Sergio Busquets is going to join into Miami as well um, as a free agent. Leo Messi will join into Miami. And the next one to make a move to there is Luis Suarez. And we know he's currently at Gremio. Uh, in South America, but he's going to make his move to there, um, and he will just leave Grêmio. Not sure if it will be a termination of contract, free agency, I'm not sure. But we know Aston Villa, there was a time when they were interested in Suarez, that interest is gone. So, Luis Suarez wants to... um. Meet Sergio Busquets and Leo Messi uh, in Miami to join into Miami. Um, uh, this season, so looking to, and we know the friendship between um, Messi and Suarez. Uh, but. Into Miami. Another player in the mix is Angel Di Maria. Because uh, we know he is a free agent now. And into Miami uh, are informed on the conditions of that deal. 
So once you again, Argentinian mates of Lionel Messi. The, the, but the thing is, with this one, uh, Di Maria's agent want to uh, get him a move in Europe, and that is a priority at the moment, a move to Europe. But Benfica are on it as well. Uh, but into Miami, we know. Um, at the moment is um Sergio Busquets getting in. We've now got Messi. Suarez wants to join. There's interest in Di Maria, but now they are insisting on getting Sergio Busquets to the club. And now, last up is Levy Colwell. So the news broke like a week or a few days ago that Brighton are setting up a £40 million pound bid um, for Levy Colwell. Uh, we know he was at Brighton this summer, uh, played very well, and he's one of the most in demand young centre backs um, that there is out there due to just how well he's been at Brighton. We know he's had loan stints at Huddersfield, but the one at Brighton next season, now Brighton have got Europe. They're setting up a £40 million bid for or offer for Levy Colwell. This deal, do I think it would happen through that? Um, it's up to Chelsea if Potts, the new manager, sees Colwell in his plans, which I don't think he, I don't think he will. But Pochettino has to be smart about this. If they're pricing Colwell at forty million, you could say for you can have forty million and Levy Colwell, which is around eighty million, if you add the forty million that Colwell's evaluated at, and forty million in general. Uh, if you give us Modi's Kaiser, though, because we know that's the number one target at the moment. For Chelsea, they pulled out of the Yakate race, so the full attention is on Moises Caicedo. Uh, I don't have an update on that deal uh, for you, that um, Caicedo one, but uh, Levy Colwell could be used uh, in a Caicedo deal. But Brighton are also preparing a, a £40 million offer for it. So, that is it anyway. There is the transfer show. Uh, this has been Brandon Pettis. Make sure to subscribe and 